Let's make a cloud in a bottle and then explain the relationship between heat and pressure. This is a cool experiment. Let's go. This is destructive creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, make sure you click that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. It really helps us out. We have new stuff coming out every single week. So I've got a small little bottle here, and I'm going to make a cloud inside of this bottle. So how am I going to do that? Well, there are a couple different ways, the f but I'm going to show you the fastest way. So I also have a little screw cap here with a one-way valve. So every time I squish this little mm, soft thing, it goes, whoop, it pushes it in and then seals it. So that's how this, that's how I'm going to pressurize my bottle. All right. So the next step is going to get is going to be get some rubbing alcohol. You can either choose 70% or I have some 91% rubbing alcohol here. Or isopropyl alcohol, sorry, pardon me. What you're going to do is you're going to just pour a tiny little bit into the bottom of your bottle. And I'll show you the effect and then I will explain why it works and what we're doing. So you're going to want to screw that on so that nothing can escape. There we go. And then just kind of roll it around. We want as much of this isopropyl alcohol to evaporate into the bottle as possible. So we'll shake it around, we'll swirl it, blah, 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 all that good stuff. The next step is we need to pressurize this bottle. So I'm going to just keep pressurizing it. So I'm going to just squeeze the top of this bottle and we'll just keep going until my hand is not strong enough to squeeze it, squeeze it any longer. Ah. This is fairly pressurized at this point. Watch what happens when I pop the cap. There's a cloud inside of this bottle. Isn't that cool? Now I'm going to pressurize this again and I'm going to make the cloud disappear completely. Isn't that amazing? Okay, now let's find out why this happens. Haha, <laughs> that's so cool. Okay, don't like hoof it in because it is isopropyl alcohol. Oh yeah, all that stuff. Okay, so there's a relationship between pressure and heat. And fun fact, that's why it's really kind of warm down at the surface of the earth and it, as we get higher up in elevation, it gets colder. It's because there's more pressure, atmospheric pressure at the sea level than there is at the upper troposphere, for example. And it's that pressure that causes the heat. It, that's a little bit simplified, but that's the basic idea of why it's colder at the top of mountains as opposed to the bottom of mountains. So why does a cloud form inside of this bottle? Well, what we're doing is we're increasing the pressure, which is increasing the heat inside of this bottle every time I make a little pump here. And when we increase the heat, we are encouraging evaporation of the isopropyl alcohol as water vapor or as vapor inside of this bottle. So we can't see it because it's existing in a gaseous state. And the more we pressurize it, the more is going to be evaporated. But we are going to shock it by dramatically lowering the pressure and thus the temperature almost instantaneously. As soon as we release the pressure, the temperature inside this bottle drops by approximately four degrees. And that shock drop in temperature is what's responsible for the instant condensation of the isopropyl alcohol and the water vapor in this bottle. Now, when we put pressure back into this bottle, you can see the fog, the mist in the cloud, whatever you want to call it, is disappearing. That's because the cloud is made up of individual teeny tiny water droplets just suspended in the air. And as we increase the pressure and therefore the temperature, we are encouraging those tiny little water droplets to evaporate back into a vapor. So cool. Okay, moving on. Oh, and the reason why I used isopropyl alcohol instead of just water is because Isopropyl alcohol evaporates much easier, so the effect is much more dramatic. You can still use water, it's just not quite as noticeable as of an effect. Okay, so I've washed out my bottle, and now I'm going to drop in a thermometer. 
All right, so this is just a little strip for thermometer that shows the temperature of the air around it. So I'm going to drop this inside the bottle and we're going to be able to see, hopefully, exactly what temperature it is inside the bottle. Okay, so let's see what effect that adding just this little bit of pressure has on the temperature inside the bottle. I put in my thermometer and hopefully I'll be able to do this without shaking too much, but I will just start pumping it up. Watch what happens to the temperature. So even just with 10 pumps, we've raised the temperature by almost two degrees. Oh, did it go out of focus? There we go. We've raised the temperature by almost two whole degrees. That's awesome. Now watch what happens again if I let go. Okay, so the cloud is all there, so we can't see the temperature drop precipitously, but we will take all of the fog out as soon as it becomes clear. There we go, it's two degrees colder. Isn't that cool? Now imagine that on the scale of the entire Earth. That is awesome. Let's take a look at that in slow motion here, just to show you how fast this is actually happening. Okay, wow, that was instantaneous. Well, not literally, but that's at shooting at a thousand frames per second, and you still can't see it in between two frames. That's amazing. If you wanted to make one of these at home, there are some great YouTube tutorials out there already, so I'm just going to link one of those down below, because they do a really great job. So go check them out. If you want to buy the one that I actually used, I'll link that down below as well. I'm not going to make a commission on it, it's just, if you want it, go for it. We are Destructive Creativity. If you enjoy this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Till next time, I'm Jonathan Allers. Bye!